It is gonna hurt me to open this thing. <laughs> what is going on you guys? My name is Murphs Gaming and welcome back to the channel. Today commemorates us reaching 1,000 subscribers, so thank you very much. I wanted to make sure I do something a little bit special to recognize that, and I figured it would kind of be a cool trip down memory lane if we unboxed the collector's edition for Call of Duty World at War. Now, forgive me on the quality of this unboxing. I've never actually done one before, and I'm in a bedroom, so space is a little bit tight. So I'm hoping this turns out really well, hoping everything is in focus enough. Uh, let's get to unboxing this thing. Why I think this is a little bit special to begin with is this is the first Call of Duty I truly got into, and this is the first one that actually made me really want to start making YouTube videos because of the Zombies mode. As you may know, I am a really, really big Treyarch Zombies fan. I came from the world that my only video game system was a Game Boy Advance, and I was playing Nintendo DS. I was one of those kids. I never really used a dedicated console connected to my TV, however, this is something that my friend had. I played it with them for a little bit. This was just back when Nocturne on Totem was the only map out there. And I thought this was just amazing. My parents let me get a Xbox 360 that year. I actually got this at a Walmart that went out of business. And it was kind of funny. They had this ever since I was shopping there. I'd been shopping there, man, maybe like eight, 10 years, I would say. And when, whenever I would go there in the video game section, this thing was just rotting on the bottom shelf. It was kind of weird that no one ever really bought it. I went and I got 25% off because they were going out of business and I swiped this thing up. With this edition, it actually comes in a collector's tin. So this thing is very, very thick. And I've got the Xbox 360 edition here. What other better edition would there be? It's kind of cool how they call out the fact that this game supported Xbox Live not every game back then did, so I think it's kind of funny that they had to advertise which games had internet connectivity. I don't know about you, but I think that's really cool. Taking a look at the back here, you can see that it says it comes with a day one advantage. Well, this game came out almost 12 years ago, so I don't think that's really gonna be relevant for us anymore, not to mention if we can find a lobby that doesn't have any sort of hackers, but the day one edition is the immediate access to the FG-42 machine gun, or the airplane gun, a lot of people called it. This also comes with an entire week of double XP back when people were playing this game. So right out of the gates, you were able to level up very quickly and you had a good gun to help you with that. As you can see, it advertises all the different Xbox features and everything on the back of there. Now it says this includes a uniquely colored clan tag. Again, that would be a, like a downloadable code. It also says it comes with a Call of Duty stainless steel canteen. I know there was a lot of controversy around that because the canteen can't be opened. It's something that was just meant to be decoration but I feel like that was a little misleading. However, even on the packaging, it shows collectible canteen not intended for drinking and it's a sticker. That kind of tells me it was a little bit of an afterthought after they uh, printed these up and they kind of figured out people would probably be mad if they did not know that the canteen couldn't be opened. So without further ado, uh, let's open this thing up. So we've got our fancy unboxing knife and we're just gonna tear right into this thing. I'm actually a little bit nervous just because I never really intended on opening this, but I figured, hey, let's do something special for a thousand subscribers. So once again, thank you guys. So let's uh, let's make the first cut. That is actually quite stiff plastic. My goodness, probably isn't as satisfying as the cellophane you take off of an iPhone, but <laughs> this will do. Just so you guys can hear it. Wow. Now, this isn't in the best condition I've ever seen. Again, this was rotting on a Walmart shelf forever. So first we've got this plastic sleeve and it looks like we are just supposed to slide this out of here. There we go. So this plastic sleeve comes off. It's actually kind of cool. So you've got the branding and the advertisement on the see-through portion of this. And that way you can just appreciate the artwork that they've put on the back of here. It's a really nice glossy 
piece of art right here, you can kind of see how it reflects. It is a layer that they've put on top of this tin, so it has a really nice sheen to it. It's the same thing with the flames on the front of the box. So if you look at how that reflects, you can see that it looks a little bit three-dimensional there. It's really nice. Opening this up, you got everything very neatly packaged inside of here. They were able to condense everything into a really nice size, in my opinion. So the first thing we're going to take out is the day one advantage that they uh, promised all of us. So got to use that. So this is the little advert that they put inside of here. And they also give you some activation instructions on the back. I am going to cover up the code just for collector's sake. I'm not going to have this be redeemed quite yet. Now we've got the game itself still shrink wrapped and everything and it even advertises a 48 hour Xbox Live trial. Thank goodness I need to use that a little bit even though I play on PC. Looking at the back of here, this is just the regular retailer version of World at War. There wasn't really any special kind of exterior packaging that they used for this edition but as you can see this is just the regular version of World at War. It even has a barcode on the back of this. So this, usually when you get a collector's edition, it'll say something like uh, not for resale or uh, uh, not intended for retail sale. So this has the barcode. This means they just pulled it off the shelf. Let's actually go ahead and open up this version of World at War just to show you guys what is in the case itself. All right, there we go. Seal is off. I've just ruined a collector's edition of World at War, that's okay. We're gonna open this up. <laughs> a lot of stuff wants to fall out of there. Okay, <laughs> wow. We've got the game itself and a few advertisements on the front here. So the first advertisement looks to be a CallofDutyMobile.com advertisement. I wonder if that web address is still active there. This looks to be a thing where you could get certain ringtones or certain wallpapers. Now the next thing we've got is Call of Duty Headquarters. Now this says go to callofduty.com and register for exclusive benefits. And it is this right here. This looks to be just a way you can get onto a marketing list with Activision. Like I mentioned on the front of the packaging, they advertise having a 48 hour free Xbox Live trial. And this also has a Netflix free trial included with it as well, and you can get DVD and instant streaming to your TV. Again, back in 2008, that was something pretty advanced. Now looking on the back of this card, it shows you the instructions for redeeming your trials for Xbox Live and your Netflix trials. Next, inside of here, we have the manual itself. This is something fairly uncommon with games nowadays. They usually don't have any sort of instructions. This gives you a layout of the controller functions and everything that this game entails, except the zombies mode. That was something that wasn't really intended to be discovered unless you completed the campaign, but they point out you've got the in-game display, the health system, you've got all of those different things inside of here. You've also got a separate section for multiplayer and then a separate page for Xbox Live and the PlayStation version. This was replaced with the PlayStation Network and they also showed the PS3 controller inside of there. There are just no mentions of zombies anywhere. Instead, they felt the need to give you a blank page that said notes in case you were studying this manual and you wanted to give yourself a pop quiz at the very end. And now the last piece of the collector's edition is the... <laughs> The canteen that no one liked. And it even says, enjoy this collectible canteen not intended for drinking. So, gotta imagine you're a kid, or well, hopefully uh, not a kid under 17. <laughs> you open this up and you find out, hey, I've got this canteen that I can't even use. And this is weird. The canteen is pretty scratched out of the box. The canteen is a little bit weathered. I don't know if that's the effect they're going for, but it actually has a few scratches. The actual canteen itself does not open. It literally just sits as a prop and that's the entire thing right there. Now, I also want to show you guys some Call of Duty World at War gameplay just to kind of show you what the game looked like back in 2008. However, I'm going to be showing you some PC gameplay. I know a lot of people played this on the Xbox 360 and the game looked pretty good at the time. However, I want to crank it up to uh, 1440p, max out the textures, max out all the shadows and give you guys the best looking game that I can with this Call of Duty.
Uh, that laugh is pretty iconic at this point. I always, always buy the car in World at War. This thing's only 200 points, and it's a one-shot headshot for a few rounds, actually. The zombies don't try to hit you through the barriers. They will continue to try and pull them off as you rebuild them, but they'll never actually reach through and try to grab you. Also seems like there's a little bit less detail on some of these zombies than other maps. I also thought it was kind of funny. They have these explosive barrels in this map, but no other zombies map. It's kind of weird. And they did continue to bring those barrels back through the remakes and the remasters of this map. And look at that. No mule kick to be found. Modern day zombie players do not understand the struggle. There are no perks on this map. There are no gobble gums. The most powerful wonder weapon you can find is the ray gun. That is it. Otherwise, this map is very bare bones. No, I just tried sliding. I just remembered there is no sliding. There's no diving to prone, no any of that. I also found it kind of weird that they base the main four characters in zombies, the ones that you meet in Shionuma, like, you know, Richtofen and Dempsey. They base them off of just random character models from the campaign. They didn't really design them separately. If you play the campaign, you can see multiple different Richtofen models, multiple different Nikolai models and they just decided to use those for zombies. Zombies wasn't really a forefront focus for Treyarch when making this game. It's actually a side mode developed by some of the developers on the side, and eventually they decided to put this in as just a side treat for when you complete the campaign. Like I mentioned, when you actually get the power-ups, there's no announcer and there's no icon, it just counts down. Feels kind of boring. Oh, first try. Let's go. I mean, I do pretty much have the weapon set up to camp this game out, to be honest, but I do want to still get you guys some multiplayer gameplay. Oh, something about the nuke. They don't give you 400 points in this map. It just kills them all. <laughs> no. All right. Well, there's only one more door that's worth it to open, which is this one right here. Here's a room that pretty much no one goes in. Oh, the trench gun was my surviving gun whenever I used to play this before I actually knew what I was doing. This is pretty much the rest of the map. You just sit back here and you continue to camp. If you open this door, everyone hates you. You do not deserve to play zombies if you decide you want to open that door. Also, no quick revive for when you're playing solo. Now, if I can get the MG42, we'll be in luck. Oh, are you serious? I am recording this in real time. All right, the MG42 and the ray gun are kind of all you need if you really want to get to like round 100 on this thing. You have to get the flamethrower. The zombies tend to stick into you when they hit you, so it's really easy to die in this game. Kind of unfortunate. Oh, there's my day one bonus. Actually, I'll take that to show you guys some gameplay. In all reality, I would never take this gun in a zombie's map, but I just want to show you what the FG42 does. Oh yeah, see. This room is kind of viable when you've got something like the ray gun. You can just blast your way through. However, splash damage is something you definitely have to keep an eye out for on this gun. It seems like in World of War, the splash damage on this was just unforgiving. I used to call this thing the suicide beam for a reason. I have lost so many games from using the ray gun. It's kind of the problem with this map, too. It's like you, you don't really have a lot you can spend your money on besides the box. So in high rounds, when you've got the MG42 and you've got the ray gun, you're kind of done. That's pretty much it. Ooh, okay, here's a classic. Ooh, this is weak. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, that ray gun splash damage is just monstrous. And just starts you back over again, assuming you want to keep doing this. Or maybe they're trying to build you on the story early where you're stuck in a cycle, but I don't think they were that advanced. I think now is a good time for us to try and hop over to multiplayer, see if we can get some sort of a match out of this. All right, so we're over here. Multiplayer, I don't think I've ever played multiplayer on my PC, so I don't even have create a class unlocked. Let's go ahead and try and find some sort of a game. A totally different ballpark than playing on console. This isn't a reading rainbow, I don't know what is. Gosh, there definitely was a certain charm to these maps. They look so good on PC too. I mean, I've always played on the Xbox 360 
and again, that looked good for the time, but man, the the PC graphics, when you got everything cranked up, there's nothing like them. Oh, good night. Someone's lagging like crazy. Man, this is hardcore, and even then, with this, the Thompson is pretty weak. Brought to you by Intel. Wow, that's kind of funny. All right, well, we'll try some shotguns in hardcore. Hopefully, I won't get annihilated. <laughs> that was a wall bang, too. That wasn't even a direct hit. How did that not kill, but the other one did? That makes no sense. That is a very, very accurate rocket. Did not think it would shoot that straightforward. And he had Marty Dom. Nope, oh, that's how we do it. And Marty Dom again. Can we get any kills with this? Let's just try... I feel like they'd be over here. Oh, okay, that's cool. I've never played multiplayer on this PC, and I'm already top of the team. I haven't really done a whole lot. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm a pretty conservative player. I'm usually not on the offense, but if I need to be, I will be. I'm not really seeing a lot of people in this match. Oh, there's one. See, the thing is, I like Call of Duty. I'm just not the best at it. God, I'm hot garbage. Well, at least I can get butt shots. What? Okay. Okay, there's just me versus one other person. Good night. <laughs> His rockets are ridiculous in this game. Oh, here we go. Let's get some of that collector's edition gameplay here. Oh, jeez, there he is. And his Marty Dom got me. Oh, and dead. And we won with our Collector's Edition gun. I think that's decent enough gameplay. <sighs> All right, you can kind of see playing multiplayer nowadays is a little bit of a struggle, especially playing a free-for-all match where it's you versus one other person who is slower than molasses. With that being shown, that's Call of Duty World at War on PC with maxed out settings. I'm glad I'm able to show you that kind of gameplay in 2020, especially for those who haven't seen this game before. I still think it's a really good, fun Call of Duty. There are some slightly outdated mechanics, but otherwise I still think it's a really fun game to play. All right, so thank you guys for watching the unboxing and watching the video this far. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk talk about is the small giveaway I'm going to be doing. So I'm actually going to be giving away 1100 COD points because I know Modern Warfare just came out with season three of their content. I know they just have a brand new battle pass that just came out and I want to give one of you guys the chance to get a free battle pass for this season. So the way to enter the giveaway is number one, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Number two, make sure you like this video. And lastly, leave a comment on what you want to see on this channel. It doesn't have to be Call of Duty related. It can be anything that you guys want to see. Even if it's not gaming related, let me know. I'll be choosing a random person who does all three of those things one week from today. And I'll be contacting this winner by whatever kind of social media that they prefer. I'll be giving them a code that they can redeem to get these COD points. So again, just make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you like this video. And then lastly, leave a comment on what you want to see on this channel going forward. I'm really excited to say that right now we're at a thousand subscribers and I'm really happy to even be making a video like this. On that note, I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. This is the fun part of the unboxing where you put everything back in the tin and you never touch it again. This is kind of the part that no one shows off. They even kept the little bit of cellophane for the canteen. I'm gonna just put it right back in here. I mean, how else would I know I can't drink out of this canteen?